I, I couldn't help but think about it. I'm sure you had seen a thousand validations before, but like I thought back to like this guy was criticized about his effort before the draft, like this guy running 49 yards downfield. I'm sure you'd seen like a thousand examples, but like is it hard to believe almost? Right. And it, it, what it makes you appreciate is the guys in this building, like Joe Shane and his crew. And I mean, we got unbelievable scouts that filter through all of that and find out who the true player is, who the true person is. And they do an unbelievable job with that. It's such a thorough process. And you get to see that you find out what's real. And he's the real deal. That's true this week, kind of sort of the halfway point. Now that 17 games, there's really no halfway point. But where is he in his progression in his rookie year? Yeah, I, I think everyone's excited about how he gets better from week to week. And part of that was health, right? You know, early on, the injury kept him out a while and then coming back from that injury on a bit of a pitch count. So to be able to say each week you can point to things where, OK, physically he's better, mentally he's better, technique he's better. And it's just that's the name of the game for all of us, right? It's, it's improving from week to week and game to game. And he's really tackled those challenges, whether it's something where he knows he can improve his game or he knows, hey, this is something that he's doing really well. and We can highlight and really emphasize that. And he just every challenge he gets, he rises to that le to the level of success on those where challenges. Where do you see the opportunity or where do you hope to see him make the biggest growth, at, you know, in the second half? Yeah, his rookie year. I think it's just keep chasing the details like every like everybody else in the room. It's it's. You know, he's doing a great job preparing. They're all doing a great job preparing, watching tape and anticipating plays. And it's just that consistency. Keep bringing that consistency like he's doing. And those plays are going to come. You know, he's really is a well-rounded football player. And that that's the goal for the whole room. It's not just, okay, you're this guy, you're that guy. Everybody can set an edge. Everybody can rush the passer. Everybody can drop in coverage. Everybody can execute stunts and picks and all those things required in Wink's defense. And he's... Really, each week you're seeing improvement in those areas. Just keep chasing it. Keep stacking days. Keep stacking wins. Keep improving in those areas. You guys have seen uh, established tackles to this point, but now you're going to see a pair of rookies. Uh, do you dig deeper and go back to their college tape and try to develop a little bit of a scouting report for your guys this week? Yeah, I think with any tackle, and these are good tackles, the two we're going against this week, two really good rookies. Uh, you want to find as much detail as you can on how they set, what they do against this type of rush. So with a limited sample size of just really half a season, it's great to go back to college tape. One of the cool things against these two tackles is we're able to watch Aziz rush against them, Georgia, Mississippi State. We're able to watch uh, Kayvon rush against the other tackle at Oregon, Washington State. So you get to see not just how guys are winning, but you get to see how some of our guys were winning against them and talk through you know the details of their, their rushes against them. What stuck out watching that college film? Uh, with both tackles, you know, you can see the improvement that they've made this year. They, you know, get around a good offense and a good O-line coach in Seattle, and you see that just the, the improvement they've made and all their fundamentals there. And then you also see there's some things that they're – there's a reason they were drafted, and there's a reason they were drafted so high because they put really good tape uh, out there in college. And it's, it's – but you can tell there's growth, and it's week to week with those guys. They're getting better as well. How with, rare is it? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to quickly follow up yeah. yeah. with Kayvon in the film, especially because I imagine you had watched that when he was drafted. And yeah. You guys first got him. For sure. But getting to rewatch that now, having like coached him and watched his improvement. Right. I guess one of the benefits there is, you know, you could say, hey, this move's going to work. You really can convince a guy if he worked that move already and it worked against him. It's it's having that big sample size is, is definitely valuable. And seeing both those guys and whoever else was rushing against them in college. All that stuff helps, and it's every minute detail of where the hand placement is, where their feet are in their set. All those things are valuable, and to see them go against him, he obviously had some experience. We talked early in the week about how he approached that game plan that week. Mm. Yeah. What was that conversation? Uh, it was good. It was just, you know, strengths and weaknesses and really, you know, where he felt like, you know, because really when we break down how we're going to rush these tackles, a lot of it comes down to, our approach and you know our, our fundamentals and which fundamentals we want to use at certain times and so he had a good feel of that going in and then when we watched the pro tape be able to confirm some of those things and say okay well he cleaned this up so we'll attack it differently how rare is it to see two rookie offensive tackles both starting for the same team and both actually 
performing well because I'm sure you heading into a game, oh, two guys in their seventh NFL game, we're going to put a big red circle around those guys, but it's really not the case with them, right? Right, yeah, they're, they're two good players, and they, they play well with the rest of the offensive line. You can tell it's a unit that communicates well together. They have a quarterback that really does a good job with protections and understanding you know, different looks, and it's a really well-put-together yeah. offense, and they're two key parts of it. Had, had you coached defense against Geno before this game? We in Baltimore, Baltimore, yeah, we played uh, we played the Jets, and he's really just taking his game to another level. He How just, so? Um, I, I think it's it's he sees the full picture of the defense, and he has great command of the offense, and you can tell he's got a lot of confidence in that system. He works really well with the offensive coordinator as far as getting in the right play, and it's uh, you can see that poise, that confidence. He's he's really, I mean, he, you can't say enough good things about him as far as attacking a defense and. Really, you can tell he's been around. You know, he spent some time with Philip Rivers, was there uh, with Russell Wilson. And you can tell he's taken all those good qualities that those guys ha have and still, you know, had and still have. And you understand that he's, you know, benefited from being around those great guys. I know he's a pocket guy, but he's mobile too. So, how do you coach that part of it up in terms of rush lanes, getting to him, and just trying to take into account the ability that he can run it if he has to? Yeah, that, that's the challenge, right? Because he, he has a great feel for getting the ball downfield when he's in the pocket, but he also understands when that's when the rush lanes make it available, he'll uh, he'll attack people and punish defenses for being undisciplined in the rush lanes. With uh, you know, going back to Kayvon a little bit, but also your young guys, the, yeah. the idea, um, it's me saying when I'm watching the video, looks like, maybe not enough respect or flags are, are being thrown for a guy like that. Um, I don't necessarily expect you to air out your grievances, but when you have a young player, what do you do? How do you coach that to make sure that he doesn't get frustrated? You know, he's watching film, seeing things and saying, why didn't this happen? Why didn't that happen? Yeah, that kind of goes with the standard in our room of that effort and not getting frustrated and keeping our poise because we understand in our room, we have a saying, there's no holding in the outside back of the room. There's no such thing as holding in that room. So we're never going to lose a rush or stalemate on a rush or oh, we almost got there and say, well, we were held on that play. That just doesn't exist. If they call one, great. But for us, we understand with our technique, with our fundamentals and our pass rush, we understand we're trying to get there every time, whether they, whether they throw the flag or not, we are just going to keep that relentless effort. And when you, when you talk to any offensive tackle, I can, pick their brain as much as I can, you know, around the league or our guys, they say the thing that gives them the most trouble, gives them the hardest time, is if you just keep rushing, keep that relentless rush going all game. If you bring it every snap compared to the guys that, you know, may get frustrated or tired and take plays off. So that's the thing we really focus on is bring it the next rush. You feel like you got, got held, bring it the next, next rush. Keep on coming, keep on coming. And you're seeing at the end of these games in the fourth quarter, He's able to keep going and keep those tackles, you know, on their toes because they know he's going to keep getting off the ball, keep winning rushes, and keep them honest at the end of games. There. How do you feel about the uh, five guys you're probably going to start that you finished last game with? I feel real good about them. I feel good about a lot of our guys. A lot of our guys have done the things we've asked them to do, the way we've asked them to do it. Um, so yeah, I'm very comfortable with the guys that we're going to put out there. Because it's kind of the first, I'm trying to think, other than losing Shane, like since you've kind of settled on an offensive mm -hmm. line, this is the first major interruption, and mm -hmm. there's two at a time. Two at a time. So mm -hmm. what challenges does that pose? Um, I'd be lying if I said there's no challenges, but I also, as the life of a line coach, you, you prepare for this all the time. You know what I mean? And th to be honest with you, it happens more often than it doesn't. Um, I challenge anybody to go find the last time a team started with the starting five and finished that season with the same starting five and they didn't have an interruption throughout the season. You know what I mean? So you prepare for it. Um, you practice it every day. And, you know, I've had interruptions before. So it's, it's, it's kind of part of the deal. You sign up for it. You know what I mean? So um, I think one of the things I owe to the players is not, not make a bigger deal of it than it really is. You know, so that's how we're going to handle it. And you know, I have the utmost confidence in all the guys that we put out there. Even the guys that aren't in right now, I have confidence putting 
any of those guys in the game. How about Phillips? What did he do? Because he hasn't been here as long as some of the other backup tackles. He did a great he job. He did a, he did a really good job. I mean, one thing about Tyree is he's been nothing but a pro since he got here. Um, he's really bought into everything that we've asked these guys to do. I mean, the guys are here for a reason. The guys that are here, they're here for a reason, and they handle themselves accordingly. So I, I'll say it that way. Coach, you get Nick, you get Nick back mm -hmm. there. Talk about him. Yeah, Nick's wonderful. I mean, the, the, what the guy's been through, everybody knows about, and it's remarkable that the guy's even still playing. Um, but he's, you know, he, he's come to work every day with a great attitude, even though the odds were against him. And now that he's finally gotten the chance to start practicing, and now he's in a position to actually play, you can see one probably a, a huge relief. Um, but you see a hunger in a guy every time we give him a rep in practice of, I've worked my butt off through all this to get a chance. And I, and I think he probably, you know, um, I think everybody has, you know, come to a point in their life in anything, whatever their endeavor is of cherishing what they're doing. I think this guy realized he was that close to not having football anymore. Right. And I think he, he, you know, does not uh, take any opportunity he gets for granted, whether it's practice or anything. So, um, yeah, he's, he's, I mean, you know, I'll get a little emotional. I'll get excited for the kid. I mean, he seems like your type of player. He's the guy that was throwing haymakers at Aaron Donald last yeah. year. Yeah, I mean, tough, smart, dependable. Check, check, check. You know, so now the, the, the next step is, you know, him getting an opportunity to, to play and capitalize on those opportunities. Any nickname for him yet? Nick. <laughs> I, I mean, I got I to talk to him about coming out to practice with his shirt rolled up and super tight pants okay, on. Him. It's, it's, a, it's, not, it's not a real a favorable look for him. <laughs> But then again, who am I to throw stones? You know what I mean? like how has he embraced, you know, doing more linebacker stuff? Is it? I know you weren't here, but back in the day, you would ask him about playing linebacker when he was here first, and he was one no part of it. Yeah. Uh, how has he been accepting of kind of his new role? He's been really, uh, he's been really open-minded, um, and I, uh, he's been good. And he's he's got a versatile skill set um, that fits kind of what we do as a defense, and he's just another puzzle piece that we can kind of move around and do a lot of things with. Did he quickly? Pick up everything? Yeah, yeah. Landon's he's a he's a pro's pro, so he was good about picking right. up the scheme yeah, quickly. What what is it you want out of guys that play that spot? I think Tony Jefferson kind of played that spot a little bit too, right? Like, what do you look for? What's important for a guy to be good at what you're yeah. asking those converted um, safeties to do? Obviously, a lot of those things um, uh, that those guys play are, are situational. So um, they've got to be good at understanding the situation. They got to be, you know, also good in coverage, know what's going on, good blitzers, have a variety of a skill set to be able to do those things. So. This, uh, I was talking about, this team is ranked pretty low with stopping the run mm -hmm. yardage. Uh, is that something that bothers your guys because you always think of them inside guys as being primarily responsible for? Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean it's 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 definitely a pride thing, and I think it's you know it's all all positions are involved in that, and that's something that you know we're working hard on, and 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 we're going to continue to put extra effort in to make sure we get those things corrected. I know every play is different, but you guys have given up some chunk plays in the run game. Is that just? To prevent those type of chunk plays in the run game, is that just being disciplined in your gaps and your lanes? Is there something else that you have to improve yeah, at, or, or is know, it just different for every yeah, play? It's it's a lot of times it's it's a different thing every play. I mean, defensively, you know what I mean. It could it, all it takes is you know one person out of out of the wrong spot, or or and and you got to give offenses credit too. Sometimes you know they do a good job of of, of, of making it tough on us as a defense, and we've just got to do a good job of adjusting and and. Um, you know, just doing doing our 111, doing our part, and uh, and continuing to just work on it every week, week in and week out. Oh, why do you think it didn't work out with Kadarius? Um, we wish Kadarius well with the Chiefs. Um, not play for us anymore, so I don't have anything else to add. Did you did you think this offense would be, would have been favorable for a skill set that he has? I understand the questions, yeah. but that's all I have to say about it. Yeah. How close, Sorry. I, I get how, it, I get how close do you feel like Kenny is to contributing? Um, you know, I think when Kenny gets healthy, um, we'll work him back in. But until that time, um, you know, we'll just keep going like like we've been doing. What are the qualities that Marcus Johnson showed when you coached him previously and then when he came here now that make him a trustworthy player? Well, I think, you know, when you have a history with somebody, you understand, you know, uh, a lot about the player, both physically and mentally. Um, and, you know, Marcus is, a, is somebody that has always been a pro uh, wherever uh, we've been together and uh, is very diligent about um, studying 
um, the nuances of whatever offense that he's been in, understanding the details of his position. Um, and from a physical skill standpoint, he's got very good vertical speed, um, very good play strength. And uh, so he's been able to adapt into our system well. What do you like about how Wandale's played since he came back? Well, you know, it's kind of good to get him back. He missed a uh, good chunk of the season there. I thought, uh, um, you know, he's getting acclimated to, you know, what uh, you know, Sunday on a, in an NFL game is really like. Because um, certainly that is uh, something that everybody's got to get accustomed to. But I thought he's done a good job in the, in the last two games of, um, you know, playing fast and, and uh, securing the football and then being a threat after the catch and creating some run after catch. He has to be a, a, an intriguing uh, weapon for you, a, a, any coach just because of the unique skills he brings. Yeah, I mean, that's why we liked him coming out. You know, he's uh, got a lot of versatility uh, in terms of things that he can do with the ball, but he's not just a guy that you have to get the ball in his hands early in the down. He's a good route runner and um, can separate down the field as well. So, uh, you know, he's just somebody that I think is going to continue to improve. And his, what, what, are the, what are the limits that he has? To, are there any limits because of his size? Could you feel he can do almost anything under the right circumstances? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of confidence in everything that Wondell could do and the things that, you know, the positions that we're putting him in to do those things. So um, I think it just continue to grow like all the young players do. Like there's what? a lot of talk that you guys could add a receiver here at the trade deadline. If I'm not mistaken, you were the receivers coach when the Eagles traded for Golden Tate, like mid-season. I was, yeah. So, I, oh, no, I wasn't the receiver coach. I was a coordinator. Coordinator. Okay. Yeah. Um, my point being, like, drawing on that experience, what's it like when a receiver, if you guys add a receiver, how from a guy coming in, learning a new playbook, like, what would that challenge be like? Is it well, it's easier? Really, no, I, mean, I wouldn't say it's easy, but. Uh, you know, it just takes yeah, extra time and effort uh, on all parties. So, um, you know, just like we do when we sign a guy uh, to the practice squad or get a guy, uh, you know, on a, on a late late notice to, to get a guy ready I'm to sorry, play. That's again. what I was saying when easier, like yeah. I, that's what I meant, easier because he's already been playing than when you bring in a guy who hasn't been playing. Like that's the comparison well, I was I, trying to I make. Think, okay, I got you. So I think uh, in terms of him, um, not being rusty, you know, in terms of playing in the games, that's probably a better question for the player than it is for me. Um, but in terms of understanding the language and knowing what to do, how to do it, why we're doing it that way, um, you know, that's a process that all the players got to go through. What has Darius Slayton added recently? I think uh, Darius has been uh, very dependable in everything that uh, we've asked him to do. Um, you know, everybody talks about his speed, so that element has, has been, uh, you know, a good weapon for us out there. Um, but he's just steady. He's, he's just settled into a groove, and uh, I think we got a good rhythm offensively, um, both individually for him and, you know, what, what uh, you know, way, way Calf is calling the game to. Is there, uh, maybe this is a thing, maybe it's not, do some guys like Darius have a knack for drawing pass interference penalties? I mean, I think he's got four. Does I think, he? I think, yeah. Yeah. The one in the end zone uh, does, against the does, Ravens. Yeah, the certain, one in the end zone yeah, last week. Right. Those are two big calls, obviously, down in the uh, down in the end zone. Um, so there was one where he, he had, should have caught had a, the ball. Had a ball against, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, at least three that stand at out least. for sure. And so he's done a good job of you know stressing um, the the opponent, the DB, uh, by getting their RPMs out because he can play fast. So you know anytime that there's that threat of the you know the vertical game, um, I think that that puts the defensive back on his heels and has a tendency to grab. So uh, you know yeah, I mean we want to finish those plays with the ball if we can as, as often as we can. But he's, he's those have certainly been significant plays in all three of those games. Yeah. Wondell, what you've seen from him? This well, I think Wondell's done a really good job of just integrating himself, uh, you know, after missing uh, four or five weeks there, um, you know, jumping right into it a lot of times. Uh, you know, when you do miss time, and particularly when you go from basically preseason to regular season games, and guys have been playing, the speed continues to pick up as, as guys get uh, more comfortable out there playing against, uh, you know, uh, the different opponents that we've had. And he's done a good job of acclimating himself very quickly and, um, you know, making plays when the balls come to him. How have you seen him adjust to that speed? Like, has it picked up? In what ways? How have I seen it? I just think that you get more comfortable and, and you relax and um, you don't press. Uh, and so he had, he's had success, so he doesn't feel the need to you know press. He's just letting the game come to him. How tough was it for you to see what happened with Daniel? Oh, I just feel bad for him. I mean, he's had made such good progress every week, and it was a vicious injury, you know, and. Uh, you know, the, the, the ability for a, fi a fist to go through a mask like that 
is just so uncommon. You know, I mean, fingers go through there, mm -hmm. fingers happen, but for, for that to happen, uh, just feel for him and, and his own well-being. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you've seen that before. I mean, just, I, I have not. So and, and you know, as you look at the replay of the of the play, it clearly was an accident. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I mean to get your whole fist in there. I mean, there's just not that much space. So, uh, you know, again, feel for him. Uh, it, it's, it appears like he's on a good track of recovery, and that's a good thing. And do the, the other guys, Tanner and Chris, they're prepared to pick up the slack, you think? They are, and they did a nice job in that game. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, look at that. There was a sequence in the early in the second half where Chris caught a ball here and made a, a nice block there and another ball. And, I mean, those are things we don't expect from him, but he's a reliable, smart guy that's in the right place doing the right things. And when his number was called, did the right thing. And, and you know, Tanner's had a different kind of a role mm -hmm. on maybe third down and those types of things. And he, he stepped in in our Detroit package and, and helped us win. And, and Chris was in there doing the eight straight play, <laughs> basically the, the eight straight times you ran the same play. Yeah. And so, I mean, obviously, he was talking about it's a point of pride for the lineman. I guess it's a point of pride oh, for him as well. There's no doubt. I, yeah. mean, <laughs> I mean, there's not too many times in your life mm -hmm. in a sport where you can say, run it again. <laughs> And to have that kind of success, um, and I mean that—that's really uh, man on man, person on person, imposing your will on someone. And a credit to those guys. I mean, we, we sugared up the formation a little bit here and there, mm -hmm. but really and truly, it was a, a physicality session, and and a credit to those guys that were in there. And um, whenever Daniel does come back, I, I, he'll be in the meetings and he'll keep up mentally. Oh, yeah. Ready yeah. You know, and he he's itching already. I mean, mm -hmm. they've held him away in the things they've needed to keep him away from. But uh, he's texting me this morning. He's on his way home. He's, mm -hmm. you know, interested in getting back to the meetings. You know, we're going to keep him on the mental path uh, in every way we can to keep him right on top of things. Thank you. Thank you. What can you tell us about Lawrence Cager? What does he bring? We, yeah, he, he wasn't here in the in the summers. So we really get to see him at practice. Much. Yeah, you know, I mean, he was here one day in the summer, and uh, <laughs> we, we noticed him. And uh, he's a he's an intriguing guy. Uh, one, he's smart. He, I mean, he's been here for two weeks. He's picking up the offense. He's doing the right things. He's in the right places. I mean, he's here here early as anyone, and staying late and getting the job done. Uh, and he's an intriguing guy. And so, uh, it's been a nice uh, few weeks with him so far. Now he. He's a converted guy, right? He's only like yeah. 220 or so, yeah. so he's smaller. Is he a guy that's primarily the, the move F guy? Can you put him on the line of scrimmage? Like, how would you use yeah, someone I like mean, him? Yeah, I mean, I think he's a guy that you probably use him as a wing, um, but you can throw three tight ends out there with him. And, and you know, and who happened, you know, what happens with that, who knows? But, um, you know, more importantly right now, he's a tight end, and he's learning the position in our building the way need, we need a guy to be. I think he's uh, – probably closer to 30 or 40 than he is 20 anymore okay. but he's a guy that is has uh welcomed the move to the position and really uh shown some good things how come you i think i've asked this like multiple times over the years like you keep plugging guys in like say mcleod comes in he's cold and he makes plays like how are you, how are you able to keep doing that how are these guys able to keep doing that i think it's more credit to them in the room um and our leaders in the room um you know, it's a, it's a, they set a high standard for themselves and, and, and their play. And, you know, they expect guys to come in to play at that level and they help each other. Like the amount of coaching that they coach each other is, is tremendous. And, and, and I try to, you know, um, facilitate that. Um, I try to push that because, you know, like a guy with as much experience as a Dory Jackson can help the room. A guy with the experience of Fabian Moreau can help the room. Julian Love can help the room. X can help the room. All those guys can. And um, it, it's more credit to them and, and, and how they play together and communicate. I think Adore matched up with Evan Ingram on one snap, and it was like a high leverage snap. Like, how, how does that determination come? Like, we're going to put him on for just this one play, this one situation. <laughs> Sometimes you don't plan that. It okay. just happens. Um, you know, and, and that's why your your guys just got to be ready for the the opportunities that are presented and how they present themselves. Because again, we're game planning against them, but they're also game planning against us and attacking us. And you know, I think Wink does a great job of every week knowing how he's going to go after people, how you know the game plan that that he wants to, and, and how he's going to put pressure on them. And and that changes weekly. What are the keys on that last play? Are the guys taught to? 
you know, there's a guy running by them, almost like setting a pick kind of thing. Is it just like don't move behind a certain yard line, or? Um, well, not to give too much away for future situations <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, the main coaching point on that play is don't let them in the end zone <laughs> under any circumstance with the ball in their hands. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those defenses that that we walk through all the time. That you know, in some seasons, you never get that situation come up. You know, we had about, what, three or four snaps of that same defense, you know, to close out that game. Um, the, the thing I appreciate, again, about, about the way um, um, we do our business here and, and the way Wink leads is we were prepared for that situation and Dayball as well. Like all every week we do those end of game situations and what is the call? It's not random. It's not, hey, I think I like this one. We already know from our Thursday night meeting with Wink, and we call it win the game, if those situations come up, what's the call? What's the best call we can be in here based on what they do and, and years of study on what they're going to do at the end of the game? Those situations aren't random for us. Um, and as a coach, you know, at least you, you have that feeling of, well, and, and again, they're game planning and they're coming up with what they think is their best plays. But we're going to go back to their history and see what their history says. And, and we're going to call what gives us the, the best chance to, to win the situation. He didn't get credit for I'm sorry if this was asked, Jerome, but he didn't get credit for the tackle. But how good is Moreau's play just not to let the guy fall backwards, basically, into the end zone? Yeah, you know, we, he, he did a great job of making that contact and, and forcing him backwards. Julian did a good job pulling his arm, and then X came and cleaned it up. So, you know, it was three guys, you know, involved on that play that, that all made big, big, big plays for us so that we're here today six and one and not, you know, what could have happened. It seemed like guys were going for the ball. Do you want them going for the ball in that situation or is that just instinct there? Or? I think it was instinct, um, and especially once he stood him up. I think once he got, because you can see Julian pulling, trying to punch the ball out and mm. pulling him back. And then X comes in, and I think he thinks he stood up. I'm going for the ball. And he actually got the ball out. Right. Like, like, I think it almost could have been a fumble, another forced fumble for X. Um, and, you know, and that's a skill that he works on all the time is getting the ball out. And it, it paid dividends for us last week. Is this the best version you've seen of a Dory? Um, I don't know if it's the best version. Um, I think like, like a Dory is always like every, every, since he's been here, he's been reliable. He's played hard. He's done what's asked of him. Um, the, the thing I appreciate about him is again, and, 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 and that whole leadership in that room that they demand a lot out of each other and they're, they, they push each other, they, they stay together. Um, it's a really fun group to coach. I say that because in a way you're almost, it seems like a, you're expecting more from him this year, right? You had James here last year. So he would do, depending on the matchup, cover some of the number one receivers. Now like Adori has to, you know, he's playing that way, but he's doing it against some of those guys too on top of that. Yeah, you know, we've asked them to at times match and take their best guy away. We've at times played left and right. And again, each week, Wink comes up with a great plan, I think. Um, and, and each week, you know, we just try to go out and execute that plan at the highest level we can. You know, it, it's played dividends. You know, our guys have been unselfish and not done what's best for them, but what's best for us. Um, and I think, again, that, that starts with Dayball and the vision he sets for us and then down to Wink. And then it's my job to translate that to the DB room and, and to make sure we, we, we do that. What have you been seeing from Saquon? You know, just getting better and better every week. You know, and I know he, uh, from week to week, is always a different challenge that we have to go against with the defense. And uh, the, the biggest thing I've been like impressed with is he's been blocking pass protecting better. Okay. Yeah, so that so that's been that's been kind of fun to see. How is he balancing that fun with his shoulder? Like he, he, he I think he talks about it being annoying. That's what it is. Okay. It's like it's not anything that'll stop him from doing his job. It's just you know maybe if he gets hit a certain way, it'll you know he'll feel it and he's like all right I'm good. So it's an annoyance more than anything. It's not anything that gonna stop him from doing and being effective in what he's doing as far as his job. No, no. He was hard on himself after the game that day. He said he ran soft in the first half and then for not staying in bounds on that last run. 
What, what do you say to him after he says Well, that? you know, again, you coaching him up all these situations is kind of one of the things when we're talking about, you know, situational football, being smart that way as far as the uh, uh, running out of bounds. And he, he knew it. So you kind of mm-hmm. like, hey, we got to do better with that. And, um, you know, he's hard on himself. He's a competitor. He likes to uh, he likes to be perfect uh, mm-hmm. in everything that he does. So I rather I, I was growing up, I was always told that it's better to have a a dog that you say, you know, woe to as opposed to sick him. So, <laughs> so I'm glad the fact that he loves to, you know, uh, be competitive uh, and do things right. I mean, did you think at all, were you watching him in the first half thinking, oh, he's running soft? No, I, I, would, I, I would never. <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, no, I don't ever. And, you know, as a former player, you yeah. know, that, that that's a that's a tough word yeah, now. I know. That's a he tough used word. it on himself. Yeah, that's a tough <laughs> word. So I, I I hadn't talked to him about that. He hadn't said anything about that. But I'm like, man, that's that's pretty tough to call yourself that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, but he, I mean, he's, I, I love how he, you know, he plays and, and how physical we try to continue to get him to be. And that's going to always be the case. And, and and I've been impressed with how he's been playing so far. And, and is that particularly true? Because they must, he's got 900 scrimmage yards already. They must be concentrating on trying to stop this guy. Well, you, you, would, you would think that would be the, <laughs> the plan to make sure, you know, you, you try to limit what 26 does and, and, and the, the cool thing about how he's been able to handle that and make plays, you know, we always talk about just let the plays happen. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing for him is, you know, if we got to get a three yard game, we'll get a three yard gain. And then that one, it'll pop, you know, and, and be ready for that one. But we, we just really take one play at a time. As a running back, what kind of adjustments can you make over the course of the game? Obviously, you can run different types of plays, different blocking schemes, but what kind of adjustments do you talk about with Saquon that he can make? Because it seems like you guys have really improved running as these games have, have gone along. Oh, well, from the standpoint of just watching the game in general, you know, safety fits and things like that, you, we're constantly, to, and we get the chance to, you know, watch, uh, look at the iPads. You, you see those different things they're doing and, and pressing the line of scrimmage. It's just really the fundamental things in being a running back that we are, I'm always constantly talking to him about uh, where he can get a run or explosive run that way. Hey, maybe you need to follow this puller as opposed to, you know, going on this path. So it's a constant every play, get on the sideline, see what they're doing, make those adjustments. And, you know, we're on the same page, so it makes it, it you can get it done pretty quickly. So it's almost like show inside, that'll yeah. draw the safety. Then and, maybe if you and, pop it, then maybe you'll be able to, to get Exactly. Things, you know, if, like I, if you want to go right, start left, then go right. Th- those type of things that you're constantly just hitting them on. It's like, hey, you know, and he'll come on the sideline and say, hey, What'd you think about that? I said, well, I thought you could press it more, you know, bring the linebackers down a little bit more. And then once you do that, then he'll make that adjustment. And then next time we run it, it'll be an effective play. Was his message the same as what you were? Yeah, we were we were going over there. to, And I don't think either of us realized it until after we, we said the exact same yeah. thing. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, just good. Do you like – he looked fired up after that touchdown, Ron. Mm-hmm. I think he even went like this on the sideline. Yeah. We heard him yell at a receiver, obviously, which – he later regretted. Do you like seeing some of that fire from him? Because we don't see that very often from him. Maybe you guys do closed doors with cameras around. He doesn't usually act like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's um, that's a good thing, you know, showing your emotion. This is an emotional game, um, good and bad, and he's doing it in the right times. That's what you want. Um, shows the, you know, how comfortable he is and, you know, what he wants. He's comfortable in saying what he wants and that's good you know we're building that trust all throughout the whole offense is he, did he is he supposed to have the freedom he used on that play yeah i think you always want your quarterback to have if the freedom um if they see something um if they feel something you know we always say hey trust your instincts um and he did that there and made a good play for us so you want that you do you uh reinforce those things yeah Give Dable like a shove back on the way to the plane or something? Or? No, no, I just, you know, told him like, hey, I already I already told him good job, so I know you wanted to be first, but I mean, <laughs> kind of said what I needed to be said, so I, I got out of the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> Doing my job here. Yeah. 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 He kind of pulled rank, rank on you a little bit, huh? A little bit, a little bit, which is good. You know, he, he can do that. He's the head coach, so as soon as you notice who it is, oh, all right, yeah, I'll get out of the way of this one. <laughs> when, we asked, okay. when we asked him on Wednesday, Dave's on Wednesday about uh, Daniel a lot of the work you've done with the quarterbacks on that. What what exactly have you done in that area to emphasize that? Yeah, I think the uh, the turnovers too come with experience. I'd say too. You know, this is Daniel's fourth year, so he's grown in a 
a lot of areas, not just that, because of his experience, I'd say. Um, and then, you know, you just, you make sure you talk through enough scenarios, talk through enough reads, talk through enough things, and then you go out there and drill it. And what you want to see is you taking it from the classroom to the practice field to the games, and he's he's done that, you know, whether it's ball security in the pocket, out of the pocket, or his decision making. When we've talked about those things, he's translated to the field, and that's the most important thing. Shay, we, we know in the pocket an emphasis is two hands on the ball, but when he takes off and runs and protects it, what are the technical coaching points there that he's doing? Yeah, I don't think it changes whether you're in the pocket or out of the pocket. It's, it's still two hands on the ball because you never know what's around you. You don't have eyes in the back of your head, so you got to have two hands on the ball at all times just to secure it just in case something happens. So, you know, it's a, it's a little tough sometimes to remain a passer and do all those things at once. So you just got to have a good awareness level of uh, what's going on around you. And he's done a good job of that. It seems like he has to decide too. like he's thinking about sliding, but you don't want to have the ball out, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, yeah. There's things. always points of emphasis with ball security of when you're going to the ground, um, when you're running with it, which hand to have it in and all those things. So we talk about all of those. We do them, you know, as it's not just a Practice. drill for him. It's a team drill. You know, they we do that um, all the time. The emphasis emphasize it to all the skill guys, um, and he's taking that coaching well. With uh, with his play fakes, mm -hmm. I've noticed that. I mean, everybody has that. He's kind of taken that to another level. That one keeper when he put the ball on his hip, essentially showed the defense an empty hand. I know that's all stuff you've coached it, but. Does it go from really the ground level of OTAs, okay, this is the first part of it, and then you start building it up to a point where he's at right now? Yeah, I think you always, like, those habits start from the beginning and just keep building. Um, and that's the one thing that, you know, I love about all of our quarterbacks, not just Daniel, but the other guys, Davis and Tyrod, is they work on those habits daily. And it's been, the foundation was built back in the spring, like you said, and it's carried over to now and it's helped us. Um, you know, he's done a great job with them. Um, they've definitely evolved since then, you know, as we've kind of put this thing together, talking about doing different things with our ball handling. It's, it's not the same as it was in April and it won't be the same, you know, in December it is, it is now. You know, along the lines of what Pat was saying, it, it almost, that is that almost becomes counterintuitive of, the awareness of wanting to have two hands on the ball all the time, right? I mean, because you're trying to take advantage of his sleight of hand, and so it is manipulating the ball in mm -hmm. the pocket. So it, it's kind of a when when and where kind of situation. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when you're doing um, ball handling necessarily, you're not um, in the pocket per se like a drop back. So I think that changes their mindset a little bit gotcha. right there. Um, so I think, you know, his he knows when to have those things and when not to. Like you just said, you know, he has the awareness to it and he's done a really good job with it. Credit to him. Um, he's put his own little spin on it. What can you tell Dexter about avoiding those penalties? The buffing, the passing penalties? <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, the hard part is, you know, he had an offensive lineman holding him and pulling him at the same time. And so his hand was really kind of up to brace himself. Mm -hmm. And so when the old lineman pulled him on the ground, that's when his hand pulled down. So the only thing he could do was just let go. Mm -hmm. You know, his was totally different than, than Leo's. Mm -hmm. But as a general rule, what what can you tell tell them or teach them about? You know, they seem to call everything yeah. when you get close to a quarterback. Right, now. I right. mean, here, right. roughing the passer. Right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, for, for for Dex, just let him go. Uh -huh. You know, just let him go. You're going down to the ground, let him go. And for Leo's, you know, he's got to fall to the side. Mm -hmm. You know, the hit wasn't late. It's just that he landed on him with all his body weight, and that's 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 a penalty nowadays. So yeah. so as he went as he felt himself going towards the ground, he just needed to fall over to the side. Oh, okay. So there is a way, even though you have the guy wrapped up. Right. You just, want, you just want to, don't want to land with all your body weight on top of him. It looked like Leo got his arms out, he too, did. at he the tried last to. second. He, he tried, tried to. to go he, he tried to, you know, show the official that he wasn't, like, trying to right. 
planting him or, or stapling him into the ground, right. but because his body weight landed on top of him, it's right. a judgment call for the official and by the letter of the rule, yeah. if, you, if your body weight lands on him, it's a flag. Can you simulate that in practice with dummies and pads no, and stuff like no. that? I was curious yeah. if you no, could. No, you yeah. can't. You can't. And it's, it's, you know, it's really, you know, they put all the onus on the defensive player and it's hard, uh, but those are the rules, so we have to live by them. Do you think they're calling it more stringently than they used to? I don't think so. I mean, yeah. I, I think for about the last, you know, three or four years, it's, it's been about what it is right now. And, and uh, you know, the defensive players know they got a small target, you know, to hit a quarterback. Um, Above the knees, below the shoulders. Yeah, right? it's, it's yeah. right here. That's all you got. <laughs> you know, if you go too low, it's a flag too. So, um, and, and it's hard. You know, sometimes, you know, the old linemen, when you beat them, they just don't let you go. You know, so you got a guy, another 300 pound guy trying to drag you back while you're trying to pull off of him and go get the quarterback. So it's a tough position, but it's just, it's the rules we got to live with and, and the guys do a pretty good job with Coach, it. you don't think it's been a little bit more of a difference since the Tua incident? It seems like it's been a little bit quicker with the flags. No, I don't. I really don't. Okay. I, I mean, I, I think it's been about the same that it's been and, and um, you know, and it counts on who you're playing too. Right, you know, right, I mean, right. you're playing Tom Brady, you better make sure you, right. you're following the letter of the law. Right. You know, if if you're a guy just trying to make your make your way in this league, you know, sometimes they let you get away with a little bit more. Right. So, uh, but you know, you have to teach your guys to follow the rules, and and that's what it is, and they're going to call it. Right. And, and uh, could you just comment about Dexter's play in general? It seems like he's in the middle of everything now. Um, He's doing an outstanding job. You know, he's he's getting better every week. Um, he, he understands how important, you know, technique is to the position that he's playing. Um, you know, he's using all his gifts very well. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, I'm greedy as a coach. Mm -hmm. I see more, you know. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm staying on top of him. I don't think he's at the pinnacle of where you know, I want him to be and where I know he can be. So he still comes out here every day and we still work on the things that I think he needs to improve on. And um, and he's trying to get better at those things. So he's playing well, but he's got more to his game than, than what we've all seen so far. You talk about the humility, the humility of Dexter. I mean, I, I was with him yesterday. I even mentioned Pro Bowl, Pro the way he's playing this year, and he didn't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. He was just like, no, it's about the next game. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about the humility of, of this young man? Well, he's, you know, I mean, from the first day I met him, you know, he's, and I'm talking about all the way when he came out of college. Right. Um, you know, he's a humble, he's humble, he's very smart. Um, doing things right is are important to him. And it's easy when you have a guy like that to get him to understand the process. Um, you know, in this league, it's about playing well for 17 weeks. You know, it's not about, you know, playing good for the first five or six games and then fading away, you know. So uh, you have to stay on top of your game. You have to work hard every week and you have to continue to grow. Um, and, and I think he understands that and I stay on top of him about that. And, you know, you don't look at what you, what you can become or what you may receive until the season is over. Right. And the most important thing right now is the Seattle Seahawks, and he understands that. It's not about him, it's about our team. And, and, and he, he understands that. Right. It, it was used to be said around here about the defensive line room, you can't have a thin skin in there. No, <laughs> no, you that's can't. And that's everybody, you know, including me. <laughs> All right. you know, including me. And, and so that's the part I love about it, you know. And there's a brotherhood that happens in that room uh, between the players. Um, that you know they can get on each other about about things, and they can have fun with each other about things, uh, because they know they got to go out and lay it in the line for each other every Sunday. And you don't mind them getting on you? Oh you? no, 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 no! I get on them too. So <laughs> it, it works both ways. So yeah. Hey, coach, how important is a guy like Justin Ellis in your room? I mean, he, you know, he comes from a wing organization, mm -hmm. playoffs, and all that stuff. How important is he? No, he's, he's been, been he's been great for us. Uh, obviously, you know, he he had a great understanding of the wing system. Right. and was able to give the guys some uh, some pointers on, on things that, that they would have had to learn on their own. But because he was in the system, he could prepare them for those things that were coming down the line. He's a pro's pro. Um, and I think the thing that I really appreciate him is, you know, he's been in the league for a long time and been who he is as a player. But he allowed me to try to change him. <laughs> You know, and try to give him different things to his game, and and sometimes you know some older players are not that way. So I have a great appreciation for him because of that.